Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I've got a great show today. My buddy, Mike Newby, actually right here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market uh, where I'm at. And uh, Mike is just an amazing guy. I've gotten to know him a lot better over the last six or eight months or so. And uh, he's a member of the Investor Fuel Mastermind, local investor as well. And um, just has a great character. I mean, he really cares a lot about charity and a lot of other things in his life. Has a great family. And today he's going to share something that is probably a little bit wise beyond his years even. It's like living this balanced life. As entrepreneurs, we all struggle with trying to live a more balanced life and kind of being present when we're with our family and stuff. But it's so easy for us to just keep looking at that phone and moving on to the next thing on getting stuck into social media. So he's been able to overcome a lot of that. He's going to share that message with us today. I think it's going to be a great lesson. We'll get started in just a second. Professional real estate investors know that it's not really about the real estate. In fact, real estate is just a vehicle to freedom. A group of over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors from across the country meet several times a year at the Investor Fuel Real Estate Mastermind to share ideas on how to strengthen each other's businesses, but also to come together as friends and build more fulfilling lives for all of those around us. On today's show, we're going to continue our conversation of fueling our businesses and fueling our lives. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be yeah, here. Yeah, my neighbor. I, I don't see you all that often in person. Sometimes I guess we run into each other uh, locally here. Right. But, uh, it's funny. Sometimes I see people more online or... Uh, you know, yeah, you think being in a big market, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, being in the same market, we'd run into each other all the time, but no. <laughs> yeah, no, not often enough. So, yeah. Um, hey, man, this is a great topic. When, when we were, when we were uh, for folks that are listening, you know, we always come up with our topics right before we start recording. And for, for guys like Mike, I mean, we could talk about 20 different things, right? So we're just like, let's, what are you more, most passionate about right now? And yeah. it just kind of popped up about being present. And truthfully, it's something that I struggle with a lot. And uh, we started talking about it. And I was like, no, I don't want to steal your thunder. Like, I'm excited to be a part of this conversation too, because I need to learn. Um, <laughs> but uh, before we jump into that, because I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that, right? Where it's so convenient for us to say, this is my work. Like, I got I to gotta go now. It's not like a nine to five job where you can leave and you're like, have this separation between work and life. Right. Like, as entrepreneurs, you know, it's easy for us to say that 24 hours a day, I'm, I'm working if I have to, right? Um, even if we say, you know, the truth is, is I don't have to work as hard as I do. Like I, we travel a lot and there's a lot of things that we can do, but, you yeah. uh, I still am glued to devices all the time just cause I'm an addict probably. Let's be honest. So it's but easy hey, to do. It's super easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, before we jump into that, let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about you. Like what's your background before you, how, how do you get started yeah. in real estate investing? Yeah, uh, so it's kind of, I've always been interested in construction. Uh, my brother was kind of, you know, I just kind of watched him draw as I grew up. He's, he was always interested in drawing and, and uh, drawing houses and stuff like that. And so um, he, I, I call him an architect without a stamp. I mean, the guy is, is incredibly smart. Um, and he, right now he works for a company. He builds garages and designs them and, and designs shells for hospitals and all this stuff. So that's kind of where I got the bug for construction and, and for housing and architecture and all that stuff. Um, and so I went to school, got a construction engineering degree from UNT. Um, it took me a while to figure out that that's what I wanted to do, but I finally stuck to it and got through it. Um, and while I was doing that, I was working at Starbucks and met a guy that worked for an inspection company. And so I went and worked for them right out of college and uh, kind of went to that side of things for a while. So I learned a ton about building inspection, how things are uh, put together, how they should look um, and did that for about five years. But kind of on the tail end of that, um, I started kind of seeing a glass ceiling and uh, I wanted more for my family. I had big dreams, big goals, big giving goals. Uh, my wife and I are real big givers. Um, and so about probably about year three while I was with them, um, we had flipped a house. This was now, gosh, like 10 years ago. We had flipped one house. We did it ourselves. Uh, my dad was involved. My brother was involved. My mom was involved. Big family affair. Uh, my uncle even came in from Michigan and painted. You know, I mean, it was just so we were just having fun with it. But that kind of went away for about seven years or so. And then the bugs started coming back. Um, and wow. so 
we created our company, New Beginnings, um, and kind of started from there. So we're a little over two years in now from when we first purchased our first flip. And we're about, I think we're on deal 15 or 16 at this point. Um, and not all of them have been straight rehabs or flips. We've done, uh, we've done a rental, we've done um, some duplexes out in Longview, kind of syndication deal there. Um, we've got an owner finance I'm doing. So uh, kind of some different things. Primarily, we have been flippers and rehabbers, though. And uh, we're just having a blast with it, honestly. That's great. So, that's great. I know you're anxious to, to continue to grow. So that's great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we started talking about this, this idea of a balanced life. And, uh, um, you know, I struggle with that because I don't, I could live in more balance. The, you know, the problem, I think one of the big problems for entrepreneurs is, we always move the goal line on ourselves. Yes. It's like, I, I say, I want to achieve something. And then when it gets closer, we're like, ah, oh, that's a dumb goal. Like, let me, let me double it. And so right. you're, you're, if you're like that, not everybody listening is necessarily like that, but a lot of entrepreneurs I think are like that is um, it's hard to have that balance. Cause if you stop at that goal line and you were cool with it, you could probably find more balance or sure or start to lay back a little bit and enjoy more. Right. Of life. Now, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy my life. I I've kind of realized that I enjoy the pursuit of big goals. Like that is, it's not so much. I enjoy getting to the goal line. I enjoy uh, somewhere. I enjoy moving that goal line, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get to it and then you're like, well, now I've done this. I could, I could do this now. Right. You right. know, And you set it even further, you know, out in the distance. So, yeah. and I think that's as entrepreneurs, you love that. You love that hustle part of it, you know, and right. I think that's why we move it and keep moving it but we got to be careful because we'll get caught in that all the time and forget all this other stuff over here as to why we started out doing it in the first place. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's easy as you know, I think you'd agree. It's easy to say, it's easy to fall in the trap of I'm doing this for my family. Uh, I'm doing this for the impact, like finding ways to tie your why to something that is a little bit, you yep. right. It's a little bit like cloudy as to what that really is. It's like, well, okay, well, when you get to a certain point, it's like, well, maybe your family would rather have you around more instead of like making right. more money that you don't need or whatever, right? But you know, especially, especially for you guys like you, like you're really big on giving back to charity and stuff, and that that drives you too. Like, I need these resources to help my family, to help the communities I care about, all those things, right? So, how do you balance all that? Yeah, so uh, I did a so I had a really tough time, especially being a first time business owner, first time entrepreneur. I always had the bug, but I never owned my own business, never ran my own business or anything like that. I've always been, you know, when I was with the company last, I got kind of high up on the chain. So I saw kind of how the executives ran and stuff like that, but I didn't ever know how to do it myself. Um, and when I first, when we first jumped in, kind of, I left that job. And uh, even before then, when I was trying to balance both of them, um, I was on my phone all the time. Uh, I was... I just, just like you mentioned, I felt like I had to be on 24 seven. I felt like I had to answer an email at 12 o'clock at night, you know, and almost to the point of, so the person answering it the next day was like, Oh wow, he was working at 12 PM, you know, or, or midnight, you know, or not, not 12 right. PM, but midnight. Right. And, um, and so it was, it was part hustle, part starting out feeling like I had to do that, you know? Um, but in the midst of all of that, you know, my wife, uh, very candidly was, you know, you're on your phone all the time. You know, you're not present. Your kids are starting to notice. So my kids are at that time, they were one and a half and, and three and a half, you know, and when she starts saying stuff like that, I start to finally, like, it took a while for me to, you know, yeah, but I've, I've got to do this. I'm doing this for us, you know, just right, like, right. um, and so I finally started realizing that I had to figure out how to do it. Um, so uh, a plug for Darren Hardy, but I absolutely love him. And I watch, he has a morning video that you can, uh, it's called Darren Daily. Um, and I watch it every single morning, but I did his course uh, called Insane Productivity. Um, and it really opened my eyes. Uh, the second module in there had this digital assessment that you do. And it's essentially rehab uh, you know, not alcohol or drugs, but for your phone or for your computer or being, you know, digitally attached, you know, and because in terms of marketing as, as real estate investors, we know we're trying to follow those people. We're trying to be in everybody's face. And at any point in time, any company can just reach out, you know, and almost like touch you at any point they want, you know, if you yeah. search for something like that. Right. 
Um, and so I, I did this assessment and it's asking things like, do you stop at a red light when you're stopped? Do you pull up your phone and look at it? You know, do you, uh, do you have phantom vibrations from your pocket? Do you have to check your phone? You know, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, do you have to, if you leave the house, do you, and you forgot your phone, do you turn around to go get it? You know, you feel naked without it. That's, we've all done this, you yeah. know? Yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. We feel like we've come. So far, they're all yeses for me. I, uh, <laughs> exactly. And, and, and so there was like 50 questions and I was like 42 of them. I said, yes, you know, and it's, yeah. it says I was a, a crackhead is the actual term, <laughs> called, you know? And so it really opened my eyes. You know, I didn't even realize how much, because just it becomes a part of you. You're checking Facebook, or you know those are on Twitter. I don't know who, who's on Twitter anymore, but you're checking that. You're checking all the different things. You you feel like you have to open your email. Another one was, do you refresh your email even though there's no on Reds, but you think you may have missed something in the last five seconds because it didn't. Right. Is this thing even working? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Is my internet down? What's going on? Um, and so it, it it really started me thinking of, I've got to, I've got to do something about this. And so one of the first things I did was I turned off every notification essentially on my phone. So no longer do I get pinged when somebody's updating Facebook, no longer do I get pinged when an email comes in, yeah, you know, that's great. no longer is any random app like the weather pinging me and it's buzzing me and I have to look at my phone and then I check the weather real quick and then, Oh, I'm on here already. I'll check Facebook. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You get sucked in, right? One thing leads to another. So I can't tell you the, the feeling was almost euphoric after I turned off all those notifications because yeah. I felt like I got my life back. You know, it was, it was, I didn't realize how bad it had gotten, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, and so just the, the, the easy step that took me, you know, less than 30 minutes of going in and turning off, you know, every single Facebook group you join automatically, it will notify you when somebody posts in there. So you have to go in there and make sure you turn off all those, you know, Absolutely. you leave on a couple that you may want, you know, um, but there's tons of them that I'm sure people have joined that they really don't even care about, but it's going to buzz your phone every single time. Yeah. yeah, I hate that. I mean, I, I'm saying I actually did turn off. Uh, I don't know when I did this, maybe six months ago, I turned off all my notifications too. like, I don't want to see that I have an email that I haven't looked at yet. Because the truth is, is you're probably the same. I get hundreds of emails a day and like 90% of them are junk, right? Right. And exactly. so um, exactly. I don't, you know, the problem is, is I would assume, oh, I got one on red message. Like, oh, that must be important. It's like, no, it's like, spam even, right? It's like, what the hell is right. this? <laughs> so it's exactly. crazy. But it's weird. It's like, is there entrepreneur? You know, it's weird. We get into this business, real estate investing for us, but any business you would get into, um, you know, we'll kind of speak for real estate investors here, I guess. You get into it because you want to have more balanced life. You want to live a better life. You want more freedom over your schedule, right? Yeah. We have a real good job of like making sure we fill that day up with something just so when we get done for the day, we can say, well, I worked hard today, right? It's like, yeah, yeah you, you, you were on Facebook and checking a bunch of emails that don't matter, you know? Right. Right. Was, it, yeah, was no, it productive? Exactly. You were busy, but was it productive? Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. There's, there's a really good book. I'm going through it now about I'm probably three quarters of the way through the 12 week year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, what else? Um, Brendan Bouchard has his high productivity habits. Yeah. Really high, good high performance, high performance, habits. high performance habits. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Darren Hardy talks about it. You, you've got to build in time every single week. So now I have this time. Uh, I plan my week on Sunday, Sunday nights. I plan my week ahead and those are vital tasks that I come up with. Um, and I come up with those with this quadrant system that he has where it's got your, your pick your three main goals for the year. Okay. And then you put those in there and then you have what's called the devil's vortex and the devil's vortex is essentially, so you write down all the tasks you think you have to do for the week or, you know, or, or, um, you know, things you need to do. And if they fall any, anywhere outside of those three, it goes to the devil's vortex, right? And you, you, those are not tasks you should be working on. They're not getting you towards your goal. Right. Um, and so I plan my week like that, but in my week, I build in time every single week, uh, probably a couple hours or so to sit there and just think literally phones off. Nobody can contact me. 
I go to my happy place, whether it's Starbucks or, you know, a room in my house or somewhere random and I sit in my car, you know what I mean? Just wherever it is that, that you, you know, enjoy, I sit and think, and I've got 10 questions or so that I ask myself, and I don't know if I have them here or not. I do. I actually have them. They're called my think time questions, but um, I, I go through and I essentially plan this time where I'm not doing anything else except thinking about my life, thinking about my business, thinking about my family. And if I'm on track, if I've created enough buffer, if I'm working too hard, if I'm not working hard enough, um, do I need a vacation? You know, uh, that type of stuff, you know, and, and I just ask, am I happy? You know, a simple question, am I happy? You know, we don't, sometimes we don't sit back and just think about these types of things. You know, we're just go, 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 go. Right. You know, and so I build in that time to my week. Um, you know, and it actually goes in my calendar. It's an appointment in my calendar, you know, that this is, this is happening at this time. And once it's in the calendar, it helps out to not move it around. Right. You know, not double just, book it. And yeah, or I'll just, I'll get to that next week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so. great. Yeah. So you're, you're really kind of hitting on the concept of time blocking, which is, yeah. is a powerful tool, right? I mean, I, I do that too. Sometimes I don't stick to it, but I definitely, um, you know, I try to adhere. There's some, some times that I block that like the one that I actually stick to the least, which I wish I did is on Fridays. I, I tend to block the whole day and it's just like Mike day. I can do whatever I want. Now, the truth is, is my greatest hobby is more work or thinking about work, but it gives me the flexibility to like, right. You know, if there's some lunch, like, you know, uh, this week I'm, uh, actually having lunch with Daniel Moore uh, and he lives in Weatherford, by the way. So I am I'm in like Louisville. I'm like, for those of you that are DFW, so we're meeting <laughs> lunch, but it's, he's like an hour, hour and 20 minutes away. I'm like, well, right. I'll, I can do it on a Friday. Cause that's a lot of time. Right. But anyway, things like that, like I spend, just block these times. Like we're, as we're recording the show right now, I have uh, Thursdays are content and coaching days. So I have yep. for my coaching program, Thursday afternoons, we have coaching calls and webinars. And in the morning kind of session, I do shows. Right. And so yep. just kind of yep. like make these days almost have themes. Right. Right. And uh, then I have like, I have lunch with my wife almost every day. I, and we've always done that, but it used to be like, oh, I don't have time today. Or maybe I can go at like one thirty. It was all over the board right. and I just fit it in if I could make it work. Um, but now it's like one to two every day blocked off for lunch. Yep. yep. Exactly. What happens is, is you don't like fill those times with other stuff that might not even be pertinent. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my workouts go in there. I even went to the extreme and I put my bedtime to my wake up <laughs> in the calendar. And, and look, yeah, it, it's never like, a, it's not an exact science, you know, yes, we stray from it and this and that, but if it wasn't in there at all, I would probably stray and never get back to it. Sure. Right. I would just keep going this way. And before I know it, I'm out all the way in left field and I've forgotten where I started. Right. You know, yeah. and so it goes in there. And so I try to get to bed by 1030 every night. I try to get in bed by 10. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes I think I just need to come home and sit on the couch and relax. Right. And right. so, and that doesn't happen until 1030, you yeah. know, but I try to wake up at 530 every morning, you know, and yeah. so it goes in the calendar and I've got routines for each of those. Yeah. And you start to develop those routines, right? It becomes habit. Like, especially yep. if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. I need to start blocking some time. And you know, I, I, I did the same thing. I was like, I literally have in my calendar and it's become routine now. So I don't, I don't have it in my calendar anymore, but for the last like year, I'm like yeah. at six o'clock and I only live in, I only live a mile from my office, but like six o'clock, I was like, go home, like go home. I had yeah. to like, let, put, put a calendar in there to tell me when to go home, yeah. uh, notify my calendar, but it developed that routine to the point right. that where now it's like, it's no question. I need to be home by six. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just those little things. I've got, I've got reminders throughout the day that just come up, you know, come up at 7 a.m., come up at 12 p.m., come up at 5 p.m. Some are just little word reminders, you know, uh, that just, um, you know, one of them is embrace the struggle and it just comes up three times throughout the day, yeah. you know, and it just pops up and it reminds me. And sometimes I'm, I'm sitting there like sulking and, you're, and then it just comes up and you're like, okay, breathe, embrace this, figure it out. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, just, yeah, that's good. Like it's just that. a reminder to like be aware of where you are and know that, yep. you know, you, you, maybe you could tie it into where that quote comes up and then like mama says, knock you out, starts playing or something. <laughs> exactly. <It's all> pumped <laughs> up. 
<laughs> I'm sure you eye of the tiger. You yeah. know, I'm sure it's yeah, exactly. exactly exactly some pump up music. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So um so talk a little bit about um kind of like this idea of bookending your day. Like you get yeah. up at a certain time. I know you you said this before we started the show, and I did this for a while. I've gotten away from it now. So a while back, I was creating a new training program. Uh, for our coaching students. And I just, man, I just couldn't get it done. I just wasn't moving fast enough. It was taking mm -hmm. way longer. And there were a bunch of people that I'm connected to on Facebook that were like, I'm getting up at 4am 4, 4 to like work and stuff. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm more of a night. I'm not, I, I like to, I stay up later than I should. I'm the same way. And um, so it just got to the point where it was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to start getting up at three. I'm going to get up at three every day. And I did it. And it was painful because I had to go to bed at like nine. Right. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I was for like several weeks, I got up at three o'clock yep. and, but and I found between like three and seven that before I have to take my son to school, like I would get more done in that by the time yeah. I get up, honestly, it was a half hour by the time I'm like awake and coherent, sure, yeah. but like that three, three and a half hour time spread, I would get more done than I'd ever gotten before in a normal, like eight, eight or nine hour day. It was just, oh, sure. I'm not on social media. I'm like in my mind, I'm like, man, I didn't get up this early to check social media or email. Right. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get this work done. Right. And crazy how productive that time was for me. Yeah. I mean, cause once, you know, either 7am or 8am, once the day kind of starts, you start getting bombarded with all these other things that take you off track. And right. so yeah, if you set yourself up, cliche, set yourself up for success, you know, in that first couple hours and you just go at it, you know, it's just you and whatever work you need to get done and you're intentional about it. You probably the night before were like, I'm going to get up and do this thing in the morning, right. you right. know, and some people even go to the extreme, like I'm going to take, you know, if this is what I'm working on, like this goes on my computer in my office and this is like, it makes it so easy. All I have to do is wake up and wake my computer and there's my work, right? right. right. You just, you break the barrier down. You know, yeah. And some yeah. of it at that time too, when you get up early, uh, basically I'm encouraging people, if you're listening to this and you've got something big you're working on and it doesn't require like talking to customers or whatever, like it's a yeah. great time. Cause the other thing it does is like, I didn't like shower. I didn't like do anything. I wasn't getting ready for the day. I was just like roll out of bed, not worried yep. about brushing my teeth or anything. Like just go and crank, you know, it was just yep. like no distractions, no opportunity to get distracted anywhere. Exactly. Uh, just like go and get shit done basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's just you and whatever needs to get done, you know, and it's amazing. And there, there's flow. They talk about flow, right. And, and every single distraction that happens, it can take up to 21 to 23 minutes for you to even get back on track. You don't even realize it. this whole multitasking thing. And I hate when people say multitasking, you know, I just, it drives me nuts because you think you're doing all these different things at once, but you're just kind of starting and stopping stuff and you're not getting in any real, good state, you know, yeah. mental state. And so if you're, if you're doing something anywhere from 45 minutes or more in a row, like if that's all it is you're doing, you get into this total other mental flow where stuff just starts piecing together and it just makes it so much easier, yeah. you know? So if you can get those chunks. So like my morning, I wake up at five 30. Um, and, and if you have trouble with that, here's how I fix it. I'm a night person. I absolutely love the evening. I would stay up all night long if I could. I love it. And, and, and I hate the mornings. I'm not a morning person. Like, <laughs> and so I had to trick myself. I had to find ways to get around this. And so I found two of my buddies and I convinced them to also wake up with me. Okay. That might take some time too. One of them actually loves waking up early. So that actually worked for me. So find your friend that loves waking up early and have him call you at whatever time you want to get up. Okay. Wow. So my buddy calls me at 5.30 every single morning during the week. I give myself a break on the weekends, okay? But during the week, he calls me. And that, I have to be awake for that call. Like mentally, if I miss my friend's call, like it, it's, a, it's a whole other ball game. You know, like I feel like I've, I've let him down now, right? You know, it's not only letting myself down, I'll let somebody else down. Um, and so, and we chat for five minutes. Sometimes we don't have anything to say. Sometimes we chat, you know, for a little bit, um, you know, and, uh, and, and we do that thing and that gets me up. I That's eat a quick good. breakfast. Um, I read my Bible every morning. Um, I, uh, watch my Darren daily and then I get to work. So probably about six o'clock, you know, I'm working and I work for 
you know, a couple hours straight there and I get so much done in those first couple hours, you know, before I've got to get the kids going and get them just to, you know, to daycare, you know, if Sarah's yeah. working or whatnot. Um, but awesome. that, that's my morning. It's a routine. And now, now it has become, you know, routine. I, I didn't even mention, I, I drink, I drink a cup or a, a glass of water every morning because you get dehydrated over the evening. You need a glass of water in the morning. It'll, it'll help you wake up. Maybe not instantly, but it'll help you get up. Um, and I have that prepped the night before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is wake up, get out of bed, go drink that glass of water. I don't have to pour it. I don't have to spill it all over the ground or drop the glass or whatever. Um, and then I stretch for seven minutes also, but that's my, that's my morning bookend. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. Um, and, and a lot of people talk about, yeah, I get up at 3 a.m. Yeah, I get up at 4.30. I get up at 5. But nobody talks about the night before. Like, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, but how are you, how are you doing that? How are you getting prepared for that night before, right? Sure. Um, I just read the, uh, the Sleep Revolution by Ariana Huffington. Hmm. Great book. Um, uh, really, really good read. It's a long book. It was, and, and I do everything on Audible. Um, but uh, I've read more books on audible in the past two years of my life than I've ever read in my entire life. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm probably at 40 or 50 books at this point, probably. Um, and, and I try to take notes and all that stuff, but I read this book and she's, she, it's based on, you know, years of, of, of research and evidence and all this stuff, seven to eight hours. That's what an adult, you know, needs, um, as, as kids, you need more, but, once you get to an adult stage of your life, seven to eight hours, seven is fine. So I chose seven. I was like, Man, there's no way I'm getting eight, <laughs> you know, like how, how is that possible uh, with everything we got going on? Um, and so I start winding down. I try to wind down around nine 30, 10 o'clock. You know, I start mentally shutting my brain down and mentally starting preparing for bed. I may be doing some kind of, you know, tasks like washing the dishes or doing some laundry or stuff that, you know, mindless, you know, kind of stuff, but my mentally getting ready for bed already. Right. And I try to get in bed by 10. Like I said, it doesn't always happen, but I try to. Yeah. Um, and then I try to have myself asleep by 1030, you know, I'm either reading, um, you know, or, or journaling or something like that, you know, yep, at that yep. time. Yeah. So that time blocking having those routines, man, it can make a difference. No doubt. Uh, I think yep. even during the day, like I've, we got to a point, we went through an EOS implementation, entrepreneur operating system, uh, yep. about 18, maybe about two years ago now, almost two years ago, year and a half ago, let's say. And uh, then we, you know, we just, my whole team, we started being aware of like, cause we had a pretty open, we've moved to a new office now, but we had a pretty open working area, uh -huh. never shut our doors. It was always, and you know, you know, you know who uh, several people on my team are. And yep. we're the type of people that like to talk to each other all day long. So right. just like, Hey, you have a second, you have a second, you have a second all day long. And it was like, okay, we can't do this. Right. Let's, you know what, what I, what I started and we didn't really stick to this. I'm trying to get back to it now is uh, three days a week. I had what I call a, call a stump meeting, it's just a 15 minute meeting. Like what do you need me to approve or what do you, yep. what is it you need me to do instead of the little emails? Like, Hey, what do you think about this picture? What do you think about this logo? What do you think about if we decide this or little decisions Good. But, but those little bitty decisions, can, like you said, can derail you for 15, 20 minutes. Yep. And us, like, do you have a sec? It's never a second. It's like, no. it's a, it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Next thing you know, we've been talking for an hour and yep. I didn't even get the stuff done that I needed to get done. And so having times in your, you know, we have our uh, level 10 meeting, which is part of the EOS process. Every yep. Wednesday, 1030 to 12, we have our, EO, our level 10 meeting. We have very specific times that our team has meetings. Everybody knows when it is. If you have a bunch of questions, store them up and let's like tackle them during these times. And so right. there's lots of ways to take this kind of time blocking idea and move it to your team too, not just like individually, yes. personally, right? Right. Oh yeah. I mean, you apply it to your personal life, your business life, your team. I mean, there's so many, it's, it's so good. I mean, and, yeah. and look, I, I, I've started it and stopped it and started it and stopped it, but I've come back to it. And once you just actually commit do it, you know, and, and actually start putting it in your calendar, like, and getting it done. Like it's, it changes things. It really yeah, does. It can definitely make you more productive. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. when you start to think about the, there's this like, a, this has become kind of a cliche now, but you know, a, a guy like Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos, any of those guys, they have the same 24 hours in a day that we do. Right. And they're yeah. like light years more productive. Right. Of course they have a team and resources, but they didn't start that way. Like, how can I be as productive in my day as they are? Right. And it's, yep. through, it's through some of the things we're talking about here. It's through obviously building a team and all that, but 
um, this is how, this is how you move forward and progress in your life and your business. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's a couple if, do we have a couple of minutes for, for two more sure. like, little tactics? So I don't look at email before 10 AM. Okay. And I don't look at email after 8 PM. Mm, wow. Okay. And as far as social media goes, I don't get on, I don't look at social media at all before 8 AM. And I don't look at, at it at all after 8 PM. So I've set those kind of boundaries. So I'm not distracted whatsoever. That's kind yeah, of like that's rule, you know, uh, apps, um, I don't, I don't know what they are, but I know there's apps you can use now to like set yep. those timers too on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't used any of those, but it was just kind of a mental thing. Um, and that's something that's also helped with separating business and family too. Cause I felt like I always had to be on my email. I felt like I always had to be checking Facebook for networking or whatever, but that's helped me kind of disconnect that. Like eight, like literally eight o'clock comes and I'll pick up my phone to go check something. And I'll, no, you got to put it down, you know? And, and so it helps me stay present. That, that yeah. was a big thing for me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Mike, so you're, you're a member of the Investor Fuel uh, Mastermind. Would, would you mind just taking a minute and kind of share? You've been in the group for probably about... We've had two meetings, so a little over six months. Yeah, about half a year now. or so. So would yeah. you mind sharing just a testimonial on, on how the group has helped you and you know, what your thoughts are on it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it's, it's been game-changing for us, really. Um, you know, it's, it's something about, you know, they always talk about surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. And, you know, when you do something like investor fuel, no matter whether you're the guy that's doing a couple of deals, you know, here or the hundred plus guy, you know, getting around the people on all ends of that spectrum, you know, and just brainstorming, talking through things, the accountability part of it. You know, we do the the quick hot seat presentations that really like some people get up there and they had no idea what a KPI was, you know, they weren't tracking it. And then, so it, it, it forces you to look at your business from a different perspective. Right. Um, and, and the connections we've made, the friendships we've made, uh, we've just, we've absolutely loved it. Um, and I, I couldn't recommend it more to somebody who it, maybe they're stagnant, maybe they're stuck, maybe they're trying to get to that next level. Um, uh, maybe they're trying to find that missing piece, you know, um, we're always connected on the Facebook uh, group. There's so many nuggets, gold nuggets that go through that Facebook group. Any question, if I hit it during the day, I just go and post in there and it's answered within the hour, yeah. you know, and, and multiple people posting. Um, and so we just love it for, for so many different reasons. It's been great. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you. Glad, glad to have you as a member, my friend. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Hey, uh, thanks for spending some time with us today. If folks wanted to reach out to you or connect with you, where, where would they go to learn more? Uh, you know, it's funny we say the social media piece we've been talking about, but honestly, that's <laughs> don't probably... try to contact you after 8 p.m. We know that. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't contact me before or after eight. I won't respond. But no, I mean, if you want to friend me on Facebook, that's good. Uh, or we've got um, our company uh, Instagram page is New Beginnings Homes, and that's spelled with a Y. But I'm sure you'll probably put a link in there um, for that. Um, those are probably the two easiest things or my email is Mike at new beginnings.com. It's N E W B Y G I N N I N G S.com. Awesome. We'll have links down below here in the show notes for those ways to contact you and some of the other stuff that we talked about uh, today, some book references and Darren Daly and stuff like that. So yeah, appreciate you a ton, my friend. No, thank you. Uh, it was awesome to be on. It was a pleasure. Yep. Always good to see you everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you've been listening to the Investor Fuel Mastermind podcast and you haven't really subscribed yet on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, YouTube, uh, if you do, we'd love it if you subscribe. It gives us a uh, it gives us a little bit of indication uh, of uh, our kind of our pulse, how we're doing, whether we're serving you well or not. So, hope you got some value out of this. If you could subscribe and leave some positive reviews, we'd appreciate it. Of course, you can watch all of our shows. You can access them by going to investorfuel.com. Appreciate you a ton. See you on the next show. Are you an active real estate investor? If so, and you want to latch on to the power of surrounding yourself with over a hundred of the nation's leading real estate investors, all committed to building stronger businesses and living richer, fuller lives, you should jump on a call with us to learn more about Investor Fuel. Simply visit investorfuel.com to get started.